Number 25, Lufthansa Heist. On December 11, 1978, Jimmy Burke, an Irish-American gangster who was part of the Lucchese crime family in New York City, got permission from the Gambino crime family, who controlled most of JFK Airport, to carry out a heist. That morning, before the sun came up, gunmen from both families entered Building 261 and made off with $6 million. It was much more money than anyone expected, though, and it led to a lot of infighting after the robbery. Number 24. The Great Train Robbery. In August of 1963, Bruce Reynolds and his gang boarded a train at Bodega Railway Bridge in Buckinghamshire, England, and made off with 2.6 million pounds, or the equivalent of 40 million pounds today. Although it was an enormous lump of cash and most of the robbers fled the country, their luck eventually ran dry and they were all caught. Number 23. The Dunbar Armored Facility Robbery. The largest cash robbery to ever take place in the United States, this inside job was orchestrated by Alan Pace, one of the employees, on September 12, 1997, at the Dunbar Armored Car Facility in Los Angeles, California. The thieves made off with about $18 million. They were eventually caught, and Alan received 20 years in prison. Number 22, the Drumlanrig Castle Robbery. On August 27, 2003, four men acting as tourists stole a Leonardo da Vinci masterpiece, the Madonna of the Yarwinder, from the Drumlanrig Castle in Scotland, using nothing more than an axe. Valued at around $40 million, it was recovered not long ago. Number 21, the Northern Bank Robbery. Smart planning, some hostage taking, and a lot of guts were needed in order to pull off this heist in Belfast, Ireland that amounted to over $50 million. The night before the crime, two officials of the Northern Bank were visited by the robbers acting as policemen, who then proceeded to hold both of their families hostage. The officials obviously gave the thieves the access they wanted. The case still remains unsolved. Number 20. The Cellini Salt Cellar Robbery The Cellini Salt Cellar, a gold table sculpture by Benvenuto Cellini, was stolen from the Kunsthistorisches Museum in Vienna in May 2003. Surprising enough, however, the work of art was recovered in Zwedel, Austria, buried in the ground not long after. Eventually, Robert Meng, a resident of Vienna, turned himself in. 19. The Graf Diamonds Robbery The Graf Diamonds Robbery took place on the 6th of August in 2009, when two men posing as customers entered the premises of Graf Diamonds in New Bond Street, London, and stole jewelry worth nearly £40 million. The robbers used the services of a professional makeup artist to alter their hair, their skin tones, and their features using latex prosthetics. The artist took four hours to apply the disguises, having been told it was for a music video. Although the robbers were all eventually caught, as of yet, none of the stolen jewels had been recovered. Number 18. Brinks Mat Robbery The Brinks Mat Robbery occurred on the 26th of November in 1983, when six robbers broke into the Brinks Mat Warehouse at Heathrow Airport in London. At the time, it was described as the crime of the century. The gang gained entry to the warehouse from security guard Anthony Black. The robbers thought they were going to steal 3 million pounds in cash. However, when they arrived, they found 3 tons of gold bullion and stole 26 million pounds worth of gold diamonds and cash. Once inside, they poured petrol over the staff and threatened them with a lit match if they didn't reveal the combination numbers to the vault. Most of the 3 tons of stolen gold has never been recovered and 4 of the robbers were never convicted. According to the BBC, some have claimed that anyone wearing gold jewelry bought in the UK after 1983 is probably wearing Brinks mat. Number 17. The Securitas Depot Robbery The Securitas Depot Robbery was the largest cash robbery in British history. It took place on the evening of February 21, 2006. Several men abducted and threatened the family of the manager, tied up 14 staff members, and stole 53 million pounds in banknotes from a Securitas Cash Management Depot in Kent. All the robbers were eventually caught and convicted. The Guinness Book of World Records says the world's biggest jewelry robbery took place in August of 1994 when three thieves burst into the famous Carlton Hotel in Cannes. Firing machine guns, they robbed the Carlton's jewelry store just as it was being closed. They made off with 30 million pounds in jewels. It was later discovered that the rounds they'd been firing were in fact blanks. Number 15. Banco Central Burglary in Fortaleza a gang of robbers found their way inside the Banco Central vault thanks to a rented house that led them to enter through a tunnel dug underground. As expected of a high-profile bank in Brazil, the vault was equipped with alarms and various sensors, which were successfully disarmed. Over five containers of 50 real notes were stolen, amounting to an estimated $95 million. Number 14. The Antwerp Diamond Heist 
Leonardo Notar Bartolo, along with several others, planned to rob the Antwerp Diamond Center in Belgium on February 16, 2003. Since the center is known for having so many diamonds within its walls, the thieves apparently started planning three years before their heist. They rented an office building where Notar Bartolo poised as a diamond merchant to establish ties with the company and its employees. Known to be the heist of the century, the Italian thief and his crew were able to pull off a $100 million diamond heist in spite of Doppler radar, a magnetic field, a seismic sensor, infrared sensors, and even layers of security to thwart them. Even to this day, officials are still puzzled as to how they did it. Number 13. The Heist at Harry's Back on December 5, 2008, a few hours before closing time, one man and three women came into Harry Winston Jewelers in downtown Paris to look at some products. However, what seemed to be simple window shopping soon turned into a $108 million heist when the three ladies ripped off their wigs and the four men proceeded with their robbery. Number 12. The Schiphol Airport Robbery Before the heist in February 25, 2005, Four men disguised themselves as KLM Royal Dutch Airline employees by stealing uniforms and a cargo truck to avoid suspicion. On the day of the heist, they drove to a KLM truck that had just hauled in uncut diamonds due to be delivered to Antwerp. With almost no hiccups whatsoever, they drove away with $118 million and pulled off the largest diamond heist in history. Number 11. The British Bank of the Middle East Raid In January 1976, 25 million pounds was stolen from the Beirut branch of the British Bank of the Middle East by a group associated with the Palestine Liberation Organization. To get to the loot, a PLO-affiliated group blasted through the wall of a Catholic church next door to the bank. Over a two-day period, the robbers loaded trucks with money, gold, jewels, stocks, and bonds. The thieves were never caught. Number 10. The E.G. Bourlet Art Museum Robbery on February 11, 2008, three men in ski masks forced themselves into the E.G. Brule Art Museum in Zurich and took with them four different paintings that were valued at nearly $139 million. All of them were genuine 18th century art that included the works of Cezanne, Degas, Monet, and Van Gogh. They were never recovered. Number 9. The Knightsbridge Security Deposit Robbery Known to be a famous criminal in Italy, Valerio Vecchel moved from his homeland to the UK in order to continue his devious activities along with one of his accomplices. Their target, the Knightsbridge Safe Deposit Center, was known to have famous and popular clients and patrons. He planned on being a customer there so that he could rent a safe deposit box in order to gain access. On July 27, 1987, Valerio and his companions subdued the manager and employees. The bank was closed and Valerio called for backup to ransack as much cash as he could, amounting to 60 million pounds. He could have gotten away clean to Latin America if he didn't return to get his beloved Ferrari. Number 8. United California Bank Robbery The United California Bank burglary took place on the 24th of March 1972 when the safe deposit vault at United California Bank in Laguna Niguel, California was broken into and looted by professional burglars led by Amel Dincia. While the burglary itself was executed perfectly, the thieves made the mistake of perpetrating a smaller crime back in Ohio a few months earlier, which eventually led to their arrest. Number 7. The Millennium Dome Raid The Millennium Dome Raid was an attempted robbery of the Millennium Dome's diamond exhibition in Greenwich, southeast London, occurring on November 7, 2000. A local gang, including Lee Wenham, Raymond Betson, and William Cockrum, had planned to ram raid the De Beard Diamond Exhibition, which was being held in the Dome at the time, and then escaped via the Thames in a speedboat. The attempted robbery was foiled by the flying squad of the Metropolitan Police Service, who already had the gang members under surveillance for their suspected roles in a number of unsuccessful armored vehicle robberies which had taken place previously. Number 6. The Dar es Salaam Bank Robbery on the morning of July 13, 2007, employees at the Dar es Salaam Bank in Baghdad were surprised to see that the bank had been ransacked and completely laid bare. Three security guards made off with over $282 million from its vaults. Following the raid, officials were relatively quiet and unwilling to answer questions, so not much more is known about the heist except that the guards must have had connections to local militias in order to get the loot past so many checkpoints. Number 5. SMBC London Robbery a network of offshore accounts had been prepared, passwords and matching account details secretly intercepted. Using the stolen information, a team of foreign hackers smuggled into the bank dispatched payment orders to every corner of the globe. Had the international gang succeeded in siphoning £229 million out of Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation, they would have pulled off the largest robbery in British criminal history. The elaborate operation almost outwitted security systems on the swift payment mechanism. 
but unfortunately for the gang, some of the electronic forms had been filled incorrectly. Number four, Gardner Museum robbery. In the early morning hours of March 18, 1990, as the city was preoccupied with St. Patrick's Day celebrations, a pair of thieves disguised themselves as Boston police officers and gained entry to the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, where they stole 13 works of art. The stolen artwork has not yet been returned to the museum. However, the investigation remains an open, active case, and leads are investigated by the museum and the FBI. An offer of a reward from the Gardner Museum of up to $5 million for information leading to the recovery of the stolen artwork remains open. Number three, the city bonds robbery. At 9.30 a.m. on May 2nd, 1990, John Goddard, a 58-year-old messenger with money broker Shepherds, was mugged at knife point on a quiet side street in the city of London. Mr. Goddard was taking Bank of England treasury bills and certificates of deposit from banks and building societies. The bonds were in bearer form and as good as cash to anyone holding them. The mugger escaped with 301 treasury bills and certificates of deposit mostly for £1 million each. City of London police and the FBI infiltrated the gang involved in laundering the bonds. The police recovered all but two of the 301 bonds thanks to an informant. Number two, the Central Bank of Iraq robbery. On the day before the bombing of Iraq by coalition forces on March 19, 2003, Saddam Hussein sent his son, Kusay, to make a withdrawal from the Central Bank of Iraq with the help of a note, thinking that he owns the bank. The process was simple, and bank personnel consented to the request because of fear. The five-hour withdrawal period led to over $1 billion being siphoned out of the bank. And number one, Stéphane Breitfieser. Although for some time Saddam's scheme was one of the largest heists in history, it was toppled by a waiter named Stéphane Breitfieser, a certified art collector and now art thief. Although he's not known for any single heist, so comparisons to Saddam may not be directly relevant, ever since he began stealing paintings and other works of art in March 1995, he successfully made off with over 239 pieces from over 172 museums worldwide, gaining a total of over $1.2 billion worth of artwork before being caught in November of 2011.